everyone. Welcome back to the Earth on Survival Guide, the podcast for all disciplines, paths, players, and game masters. With your questers, Josh and Dan, I am Dan. I am Josh. And on today's podcast, we will be discussing all things duplicatable, because we're going to talk about an adventure that's appeared in two different places under two different names, but it's the same adventure. But we'll get there in a minute. So if you have any questions for us, please drop us a line at edsgpodcast at gmail.com. Josh, do you have anything you want to announce before we get started on this? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, he does. Assuming that nothing hugely, drastically, massively goes wrong, when this episode drops, we should have both Grand Bazaar and Deeper Secrets available in our shop in PDF with the files having been sent off to our printer to get the physical copies underway. So you Kickstarter backers will have an... Yeah, Kickstarter backers, you should have received an update with the link, with the announcement, with the coupon code, so you can get your copy from the FASA web shop. As of right now, as of the time that we are recording this, Grand Bazaar, there are a couple of tweaks to a couple of pieces of art, specifically map sections of the of the bazaar that we're waiting for. I haven't checked. They may actually already have been done, and I just need to drop them into the file. So that is like literally like 99% done. I'm just waiting for uh, some tweaks to be made to a couple of maps. Deeper Secrets, the book is fully laid out. All of the internal page XX references and internal hyperlinks have all been completed. I am working on the index, which is going to be very extensive. We're looking at probably an index that is going to be like 30 odd pages all on its own. I'm hoping to do something pretty more advanced with the index in this book because trying to make it a little bit more useful by having a, a couple of different levels of things on it. But again, by the time this episode drops, that should be all done and out and released. If they haven't, when this episode drops, they are... V- the only one that would be waiting would be Deeper Secrets, and that would be very, very, very close to being done. And that means that something horrific came up that for some reason prevented stuff from happening. So that is the case as of this recording. Mm -hmm. And again, they should both be out as of the release date of this episode and probably have been out for several days. Fair. If not more than a week at the point that this episode comes out. So that's that, that finally kind of put behind us, which means that maybe, uh, depending on what happens, we might possibly have some limited physical copies of those books at at the booth at Gen Con. Okay. That I do not actually know whether that is going to end up happening. I know we're going to have some stuff air freighted to us, but I don't know whether these books are going to be produced in time to go on that flight to arrive for the convention. Fair. That is update from Earth on Land and a very, very happy update it is. <laughs> well, let's, let's actually make it sweeten the pot one more notch if we possibly can. For those who are not Kickstarter backers, how what's the page count on Deeper Secrets? Deeper Secrets is looking to be over 600 pages when all is said and done. It will be the largest Earth Dawn book for fourth edition that we have released. And that index is going to be like, I think I mentioned like 30 odd pages. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure yet whether it's going to end up being like 608 or 624. It depends exactly what the index ends up looking like. I've got kind of all the pieces of the index ready, and Mm -hmm. I just kind of need to put them together and do some work on that and see what happens. That's going to be kind of long and tedious, and it's probably going to take me a couple of days, a couple of days of the work and the hours available that I have to work on it. Fair. Love the update. Love, yeah. Love, oh, love God, it. I love it, too. I am so. <laughs> People have been, for the most part, wonderfully patient um, and being able to drop both of those books very, very close together. together. Yeah. Will be wonderful and allow us to kind of finally start moving forward on other stuff that has been on hold. Yeah. I've got one or two other much, much less 
significant layout projects that are in my queue. There's the next Legends of Bar Save is actually all ready to go to nice. layout, but obviously it's been on hold until those books get done. Yeah. And I think there might be something else I forget off the top of my head, but keep sure. an eye out. We'll we'll have more news about that later. Yes. And of course, other things in development that we're not going to mention at all. Nope. Not right now anyway. No, not a bit. Not a bit. Uh, and I am not telling. So on to... Uh, which one do you want to call? You want to call this Pale River or Purloined Provisions? Because uh, there's sibilance either way. Yeah, this av- this adventure was originally released as part of the Thrall Adventures collection for first edition yep. under the name Purloined Provisions. Mm-hmm. Uh, then as part of Red Brick's Shards effort. Yes. It was re-released as Pale, Pale. River. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure why the name change. I think people just don't know what the word purloined means. <laughs> but it is otherwise the same adventure. Yes. I think both there was a a classic version that was released as just like a shard, which was a, a PDF only thing. Mm-hmm. And then there was a sort of third edition update for it that was, uh, I think, included in the shards collection. Uh, right. volume, volume one. one? Volume okay, one. Okay, yeah. I have both books sitting over here, The Thrill Adventures and Shards Collection Volume 1. I literally compared the two of them side by side. I can't say word for word because that's just tedious. But beginning and end was the same verbiage pretty much. The stat blocks and numbers, I think, are probably different between them because of the addition yes. differences. But the story itself is the same. And so we're, yeah. you know, we're kind of covering both of them at, at, with that. Exactly. The other main, ver- main uh, uh, difference that I could find is that the original... First edition version was written for six to eight players of fifth circle or higher. And the third edition version was written for three to five journeyman adepts. So five, six, seven, eight circle, but only three to five players instead of six to eight players. Yeah, um, that was something that just sort of in general, you will have seen across any kind of published adventures for any role playing game, yeah. not just Earth Dawn, the number of player characters typically ends up being a little bit lower. Yeah. And, you know, say journeyman, I think, again, that was probably in an effort to make it not quite as specific yeah. uh, in terms of that. There is quite a notable difference between fifth and eighth circle characters yeah. in some regards. <laughs> so lower journeyman is probably where I would place that again to kind of go along with the with the fifth circle. Agreed. Fourth circle, like upper, like top, top end of novice tier could probably handle this without too much trouble. Fifth, mm-hmm. sixth, you know, somewhere right around there is probably the sweet spot for Fair. this adventure. Yeah. And part of that does depend, obviously, on the makeup of your group. Agreed. Now, the last time I, I was running Earth Dawn and my players, I actually had them in Thrall and I was running the gamut of all the Thrall adventures. So I have not run this one on them yet. If you are one of my players, stop listening now. No spoilers for you. Anyway, uh, so I, for all of these adventures and especially um, just all the adventures we've covered so far, I love every short story that has preceded the adventure. It just sets it up nicely. And this is no different. One of the things, and this is similar, not surprisingly, to the Parlanth Adventures collection that we went through several weeks back. Yeah. This is a bunch of short adventures that are likely to be run in a single session. Mm -hmm. with, broadly speaking, relatively simple, straightforward setup setup and and plot. Yeah. They provide hooks and ideas that might be worthwhile in a longer campaign. But generally speaking, these are just kind of one-shot flavor providing situations. And one of the things that I actually find interesting about the collection overall, to talk about that before we get into this specific adventure. Yeah. This collection only has three adventures, whereas Parlanth Adventures had four. But two of those three adventures involve the deep caverns, the the Under- domain of the Pale Ones. Yes. The area actually deep beneath Thrall. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is also another one that deals with traditional exploration adventure type of stuff, just not going quite so deep. None of the three here really have much in the way of political intrigue Mm -hmm. or anything that kind of relates overall to the 
Kingdom itself. Kingdom itself and the kind of stuff that might be going on there, which I find sort of interesting. Yeah. And I'm not sure what the situation might be. One of these adventures, and I'm not sure off the top of my head which one it was, but mm-hmm. based on the order, Andrew Ragland, yes. who wrote one of these three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I. So Andrew is longtime sort of uh, acquaintance slash friend of mine. I've known him since, God, I've known him all near, near on 30 years uh, <laughs> at this point. Fair. Because this was written back in 96 originally. So I'm, I'm curious if this yeah. was the Thrill Adventures, and maybe Lou can answer this question uh, on the, the Facebook forum. I don't know if the Thrill Adventures preceded the Thrill source book or came after. Or was it I a, don't like a simultaneous? I believe so. I can find out really quickly, though. Fair. Hold on. No, almost probably almost certainly not. Um, Thrall the Dwarf Kingdom is oh, it was also 1996. So I was thinking like conti- like simultaneous development. That's why there probably wasn't. They were probably simultaneous development, um, and that may be in part why there might not be quite so much like politically inclined, but also political adventures tend to be a little bit more involved, perhaps. Yeah. And that may be another reason why, and maybe because the the Thrall source book itself ended up having a lot of those adventure hooks and frameworks that were more political in nature, yeah. um, or dealing with the kingdom more directly. But yeah, that's all. That's all kind of in, insight stuff there. That's okay. Like I said, that was that was my thought as to why they were less political, but never could tell. Anyway, a mini adventure could be an introduction to Pale River because you kind of need a little bit of setup ahead of time as to why the player characters are going to be hanging out in the Grand Bazaar at night when everything's closed. Other than you're running a party of thieves who are just... I'm just well, I'm that just is kidding. something that is actually hooked up <laughs> and set up fairly s- straightforward right at the beginning. Yes. There are merchants in a part of the Grand Bazaar that have been having their shops, their stalls... Pilfered. Pilfered during the night. Yeah. And they hire the player characters to keep an eye out to kind of guard and find out what's going on. Because while there are guards that patrol the bazaar, Mm -hmm. they can't spend their entire time hovering around just one particular set of stalls. Yeah. Uh, They've got other things to keep an eye on. And so the merchants will hire the player characters who can spend the entire night there to keep an eye out for what's going on. I mean, yeah, the whole bazaar is like the size of a football field or larger. And so it's kind of a big place to keep track of all these stalls and kiosks and, and, and tents and things. So, uh, And so I, I like the idea in the initial part where it says you need to set the scene a little bit and describe the contrast of the bustling, hustling, vibrant marketplace that the Grand Bazaar is during the day and the absolute dead, quiet, <laughs> sealed up place that it is at night. And so it's, I can't say eerie. But as a game master, as you set the scene, I would do so and make that contrast that they get to, you know, watch it, watch the whole Grand Bazaar kind of close up for the night and the sights and the sounds and the smells just kind of go away and fade a little bit. And all of a sudden it's dark and everything is sealed and there's no life around. And so you're basically walking through a ghost town, for lack of a better phrase. And then all of a sudden they come across either a noise or a quarrel or something along those lines uh, it's, it's actually a fight between like some other guard and some of the, some to and they come across a dead pail to Scrang. And so there's, there's yes. a whole bunch of roles in there and you get to use your character skills a little bit to see if you actually have any knowledge of the pail to Scrang who live below ground and the underground river network under Thrall as well. So this really does call into play a lot of the skills that your characters should be having to flesh out your character. Possibly. Yeah. Depending on what their background is and, and stuff like that. Yeah. What ends up happening is there there is a fight that breaks out between some of the royal guards and the pale ones. What's going on to kind of set up the background here is these pale ones are from a village down in the underground tunnels and river networks far below the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Their village is suffering because the river upon which they depend to survive yeah. is dried up or, or very nearly dried up 
down to a trickle. Because of something that's happening upstream, their efforts to investigate and find out what's going on have come to naught. Anybody they have sent up to look up to, look into it, has not returned. Mm -hmm. And so they have started looking for another place to live. In the course of doing that, they actually found a tunnel that leads up to the Grand Bazaar um, and have been taking the opportunity to use that tunnel to go up and steal provisions yeah. during the night so that they are, they can continue to survive and feed them their families mm -hmm. while they try and figure out the problem. A fight breaks out. One of the Tuscrang thieves is cut down by the guards. The others do manage to escape, but in their haste, leave the, the entrance to the tunnel not completely well masked. Yeah. And so presumably the player characters then kind of follow them down to the tunnel, get to the village, find out what's going on. And in order to ultimately resolve the issue so that the vendors up in the market who probably hired them are no longer getting stolen from, they yeah. need to find some kind of resolution to the problem. Exactly. So this uh, provides many opportunities to follow or track or deduce where to go uh, from the Grand Bazaar down there. And once you're down there, you get to meet the Lahala and the whole, you get to see that the whole village is like half starved and the river's down to a trickle. And what they use the river for, obviously, is to scrang, is to fish. And they also harvest true water, which they've been able to trade with other places around the kingdom. And they've already sent their best fighters upstream. They've not returned. That was the second party, actually, because the first party was just explorers. These are all fishermen, for lack of a better phrase, fisher people. Uh, and so when you get down there, this is a reminder to R-O-L-E play, the meeting between the, the Lahala and your player characters, because they're there now. They now have to wrestle with why they're there. Do they apprehend the, the people, the, the Tuscrang that came up and, and stole? Or now do they, as heroes, haha, reminder, help out this struggling village underground? And maybe the Lahala, if you, if you play this the wrong way, maybe the Lahala actually threatens to sacrifice you to the dragon, Earthroot. You know, because they may have a relationship down there. You don't know. So one of those things. So that whole our role playing interaction needs to happen. And so that's when you can clean in your social characters a little bit and broaden that out and have a, lots of dialogue back and forth as the motivations between the Lahala, the 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 Tuscrang villagers and your player characters. Yeah, and ultimately what is presented initially as a kind of mercenary job where you're hired by some merchants to protect their goods or find out what has been happening to their supplies. Yeah. Uncover that and discover the reason for it. And presumably being good guys, mm -hmm. being heroes. Yep. Will seek to try and resolve the issue, finding out what's going on. Oh, okay. Well, the problem is that your river is dried up Yeah, and you haven't been able to find out what's going on. Let's go up and, and investigate that. Yeah. And the Lala can offer payment because once the river returns, you know, they've probably got some true water hanging around because they do have some orichalcum lace nets. Yeah. Once they know that they're going to be OK, then they actually willing to reimburse the merchants. Yes. For what they have taken because they have the resources again and, you know, reward the player characters perhaps a little bit as well. Yeah. But essentially it's go down, find out that there's a problem and now we need to resolve the problem. Yes. And that basically involves traveling upstream, mm -hmm. having an encounter along the way with stingers, stingers, which are underground, semi-dangerous badgers animal. <laughs> They've got poisonous tail stinger and, and poisonous fangs. Yeah. They're kind of nasty. Yeah. You come across the dead bodies of the previous... Scouting Pale party. ones that had gone up to find out what's going on, the scouting mm -hmm. party and whatnot. Yep. Get attacked by shadow mance. some shadow mance. Again, Always. Lots yes. of poison in this adventure. So yeah, brush up on your darkness rules, your poison rules, <laughs> and your investigation rules, because you have to figure out some... Basically, it's like a you are traveling through the Underdark 
through the underground and running into the dangerous things that live there and seeing yes. what those dangerous things have done to others. And mm -hmm. then you get to the source of the issue to discover that what has happened is that a small family of cave trolls. Yes. One of whom is a Beastmaster and another of whom is an Elementalist. Yep. Have dammed up the river. Yes. The Elementalist has a water elemental that is basically preventing the river from flowing because it, it is working to their advantage. Yeah, they diverted it. Something needs to be done to resolve it. Combat ensues. <laughs> Combat likely ensues. Likely I ensues. The cave trolls aren't particularly easy to negotiate with. No. And ultimately, it kind of comes down to a situation of... How exactly do you solve this? Yeah, the, the, the cave trolls aren't particularly interested in what's going on with the Descrang. Um, yeah. They've got their own thing. And it is likely to end up in combat because cave trolls aren't particularly bright or particularly interested in negotiations or, or what they can get. Yeah. But ultimately, what ends up happening is that you need to dispel and or destroy the water elemental because that's ultimately what's holding the river back. Yeah. And once that's done, then the river returns. And if the player characters don't think things through well enough, uh, they may get caught up in a flood sweeping flood <laughs> where they get swept downstream in the course of things. I was, I was going to, there's a nice up. picture in the, um, thrall version. Yeah. The thrall adventures version of this, of the water elemental, which is basically like kind of this big watery, thing with like a face essentially yeah one wave kind of like makes like the mouth thing and then other parts kind of make like the the eye shape and whatnot. i think they i think they kept it for the shards version too yes that yep they did yeah. they did yeah, they keep kept all that. the artwork looks they like did. they flipped it the other way around yeah it's the use of negative space in the gutter and all that so yeah that's that's basically it so you know you find out a village is suffering you travel upstream you deal with the problem with the river having been dried up and uh then you head back yeah there's some combat you've got you know the fight against the stingers you've got the fight against the shadow mans mm -hmm. individually a stinger isn't a problem, but you've got a pack of like 10 of them. And I think the other part of it is that it happens on kind of a narrow ledge. Yes. So your ability to maneuver and whatnot is a little bit limited. Yeah. Know your combat options. But really, the uh, so I like the, the resolution and the dangling the dangling threads at the end, which are, where are the PCs when the river comes back with uh, such great force? Are they in the riverbed fighting or are they up on the ledge? So forth. So just keep that in mind. Um, and the other possible outcomes. Do they also go down a side trek and get trapped into the cave in or a place that's flooded and they can't get back out again, which means it takes them longer to get back to anywhere, including the surface. Uh, did they fail against the cave trolls? And now they have to go make a, go back and tell the Lahala and then go make a second attempt at it again. Cause that also is possible. Did they find the enslaved, the, the first scouting party? Cause you only saw the remains of the second scouting party. The first scouting party is actually still enslaved, which you don't know this, by the f cave trolls. So now do you go back into the cave troll area and try and rescue them? That could be a second adventure. Do you therefore have to sneak in because you don't really want to take on an entire tribe of cave trolls? That may not be a smart move for you. Um, or did you defeat the trolls, but not the elemental, which is kind of defeating the purpose. So it's you have all these little, little things to take care of in this whole thing and a possibility for a second adventure. Yeah. Maybe a third if they get lost. Not a lot, but. <laughs> you could certainly flesh things out and stretch it out, I suppose. But yeah. again, not a lot. that is completely up to you. Totally. The basic framework is relatively straightforward. A couple of fights. Another reason that things are likely to end up as a fight against the cave trolls is that the Shadow Mance are actually sort of animal companions to the Beastmaster among yep. the trolls. And yep. he was expecting them back and assumes probably correctly that the player characters were involved in defeating them. If they happen to be carrying parts of them for whatever reason, because the stingers are worth money. money. Yep. Then that may be obvious and that may trigger a fight without any kind of negotiation. <laughs> yes. Being possible. You killed my pets. Prepare to die. Yeah. And then, and then when they, when they get back to the surface, how do they deal with the merchants? Is, is the, is the, uh, true water enough for them do they still want to see justice do they have you know do they bring back the? and that's the part things? of the reason why the cave trolls were diverting the river yeah because they wanted the true water for themselves 
yeah. So I think it's a nice adventure. It's like I said, cut and dried pretty quick. One or two sessions. If you want to draw things out, maybe three total, if you're playing a long time or playing a short amount of time. Um, I think the only thing to point out now, since we're playing fourth edition rules, are there any changes you want to make to the stat blocks for the first or third edition? Since this is now fourth edition, it, I, I think if you're playing fourth edition rules, describe the fourth edition stats for the, all these creatures out of the books and you should be fine. You know, what you would sort of need to do is figure out what additional abilities the Beastmaster and Elementalist cave trolls have. Fair. You probably kind of have to have it be an Elementalist because you're dealing with a with a water Elemental. You know, my gut would say, oh, well, maybe make them a Shaman, but then they don't have the spirit relationship with a water Elemental to to do that. Fair point. But you can have like, you know, sort of a, a, a more tribal Elementalist situation yeah there with that it's possible um again if you're dealing with low journeyman and you've got an elementalist in your group to potentially not have to kill the water elemental but to to do something with it so there are definitely some things that could be resolved there and different ways that you could potentially approach the the actual resolution that is to restore the river back to the way that it was yeah my only other advice for the game master, like I said, prepare, brush up on your darkness rules, your light sources, and your perception based upon those uh, limited amounts of yeah. light down there. <laughs> that is something that could potentially come into play um, your, when your you're dealing with and... the the tunnels, especially if you've got characters that do not have low light or dark vision. You're gonna need light sources dealing with a little bit of a, of a underground travel. Go and check out our um, episode where we talked about underground exploration and some of the stuff that could be there if you are looking for ways to potentially expand on the stuff going on if yeah if things don't go great uh in that final encounter it's possible that the group could be stuck in a side passage Mm -hmm. and have to find their own way out rather than just simply following the river back downstream yes note firefly chalk is helpful (laughs) yeah (laughs) this is a relatively straightforward simple adventure not yeah huge stakes obviously that. like the fate the survival of a village kind of depends on you succeeding in what you're doing yeah but we're not talking about like earth shattering fate of nations kind of stuff here you do a good thing for some people who are suffering yeah and you know go from there yeah it's like it's it's gonna be fun to run this one it is but it's a nice little adventure i've i've run this yeah, I've not run this one, but I've run one in here. We'll get to that one a little bit later on. So, uh, folks, if you have any questions or suggestions or how did this one turn out for your party, any major mistakes, any glowing legend uh, enhancements, please let us know. Drop us a line at edsgpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, go cross the Rubicon for your legend. Nice. <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Deep pull on that one. <laughs>